Hello there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. Now, today I'm going to show you how I built my copy of the F-86 F-40 Sabre jet fighter in 148th scale from Airfix. If you like the video, then please do remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. The link to do that is that small logo down there in the bottom right hand corner. If you'd like to support future productions, you can do that through Patreon or Buy Me A Coffee. Links to those are in the information box below, as is a link to the Airfix store. Now, if you buy this or anything else after clicking through that link, then Airfix at no extra cost to you will give some money to this channel. So, enough of all that. Let's see how we build the new North American F-86 F-40 Sabre from Airfix. As usual, I've primed the kit with a light coat of grey primer. Then I'll do some painting. First are the inside surfaces of the air intake duct, which are aluminium. Next, I'll spray the cockpit tub in light gull grey. And when that's dry, I'll take the tub off the sprue so I can add the first decals, the instruments on the side panels of the tub. I'll also add the decals to the instrument panel that I've already painted black. Use plenty of decal solution for this as the instruments are quite highly raised in the moulding. While that's drying, I'll assemble the two halves of the intake duct. They go together easily enough. Back to the cockpit and I'm slotting the instrument panel into the front end of the tub. The control column comes with a base in two halves, which I find very fiddly. When they're together, leave it to set. In the meantime, I'll make a start on the seat. Now there are two versions supplied. The Norwegian aircraft has an ejection seat. The Japanese version I'm doing is just a seat. Neither comes with straps. There's a side panel, one on each side, then this headrest that sits at the top. When that's all setting, I'll install the control column from earlier. I've painted the boot in olive drab, the column in cockpit grey, and the top in black. Then the seat slots into place. Again, olive drab for the seat, light gold grey colours on the sides, and with this bright red on the headrest. Before I go any further, I'll add panel wash to the wiring here behind the seat, as this will be visible under the canopy. Then I can fit the cockpit tub onto the top of the air intake like so. Then there's this little inlet cone for the front of the engine. It comes in two halves, which then fit into this inlet fan assembly. All of that then sits at the back of the inlet itself. I'm not sure if anyone will ever see this again, but I can only assume it's at least possible. Then the nose fairing is attached at the other end of the inlet. I've added some US interior green to the nose gear bay and I can add the walls at this point. The inlet duct effectively becomes the core of the whole of the front end of the model. The fuselage itself is next and if you're not having the ammo base open then you need to add this fillet piece now. I'm actually having one side open so I can do both options. There's also a blanking piece for the gun bay. Again, use this if the bays are not going to be open. For the other side of the fuselage, I'm going to assemble the gun bay I'll be able to see. Already painted in interior green and aluminium. The guns are painted in gun metal and sit in the bay like so. Notice how the barrels are at different lengths. Start with the shortest one, which is at the top. Now beneath the gun bay are the ammo boxes, one for each gun, these I've painted in dark aluminium. Then the feed links. I've painted them black with brass accents to suggest shell casings. These connect the side of each gun to its ammo box. Then this whole assembly can go into the other half of the fuselage. There's a small piece near the base of the tail on the fuselage that needs to be cut out. It makes room for a fillet piece later on. There are also two holes to drill out for some sort of tiny vent cover later on. A 1.3mm drill bit is used. 
More choices, more choices. And if you're having the air brake in the closed position, then fit these blanking plates now. I'm having them open, so instead I'm fitting this interior plate piece. Next is the exhaust pipe, it comes in two halves, and I've already sprayed it in burnt iron. A turbine disc piece goes in at the wider end. Again, you might not see this in the finished model, but it does help locate the pipe in the fuselage. It sits into the port side like so. There's also a fillet piece that goes in underneath the tail fin. The instructions helpfully say to add 10 grams of nose weight. I use these bicycle balance weights as they're 5 grams each and self-adhesive. They sit on top of the air inlet just in front of the cockpit. Now the whole nose section assembly can sit into the port side fuselage. It all goes in very, very well, I must say. Then the other half of the fuselage can be added. It does need an occasional bit of fiddling to get the parts lining up in the right place, but once you have, it's easy to glue it together and tape it all up to set. Now while the fuselage is drying, I'll assemble the wings. First, I have to drill these holes for the fuel tanks. Now, strangely, the front hole is 2.3 millimeters and the rear is 1.9 millimeters. These seem very odd sizes. Why not just two millimeters each? It's not like you're gonna fit them the wrong way around now, is it? Anyway, if you're doing the kit with undercarriage up, there's a single blanking piece that covers the undercarriage bays. I'm not, so I'm going to start building the walls of the wheel bay. Now, on the front wall of the wheel bay are these two small tabs. You can have the main gear doors closed even with the wheels down, in which case leave them alone. I'm having the main gear doors open, so these need to be trimmed off. This front wall piece then sits on the roof of the wheel well, like this. There's also a rear wall, which also has those tabs you might want to trim off. Then the whole of this assembly can go into the lower wing. Back to the fuselage, and I'm giving the inside of the air brakes a spray of interior green over aluminium, and the same colour goes into all the wheel wells. Next are these two small actuator levers for the inside of the wheel bay, already painted in aluminium. Now if you're having either or both of the ammo trays open, you'll need to trim the very tip of the relevant wing root. The door to the bay includes a part that replaces this. So now the two skins, if the wing can go together, there are large location pins to help. Now, if you remember all those blanking plates I'm not using, you can trim them down and sand them and use them as masks for the interior bits for when you spray the outside of the aircraft. Or, of course, if you're brush painting, you don't need to do any of this. Next is the leading edge of the wing. This piece is for those having these slats deployed, which I am. If the slats are to be retracted, there's a different piece to attach. There are two small intake ducts for the underside you should fit now. And there's also that fillet for the top of the fuselage, the one where we cut out the space earlier. Then behind that, there's another fillet for the base of the fin or vertical stabiliser. So the next big task is to add the wings to the fuselage. Like so much else on this kit, it seems to fit very well and needs just a bit of tape to hold it in the right position. The ailerons and wing tips come as single units. You can't pose the ailerons at an angle. There are these two small panels on the fuselage to go in. Perhaps on other models they had camera ports or something else. I'm finishing the tail next. First the rudder goes into place at the back of the fin like so. Then the two tail planes can be fitted. These are all flying units, there's no separate elevator. They sit with an appreciable dihedral. Okay, so I'll let all that settle down and in the meantime, I'll assemble the wheels. Each comes, of course, in two halves. Now at the rear of the cockpit is this support structure. If you're having an open cockpit, this sits inside the canopy. Otherwise, place it here. I'm going to paint the gun sight now in black, including the frame of the sight glass itself. 
While that's drying, I'll start on the masks. For the windshield, I'm using frog tape. Just lay a piece over the screen, then push into the corners of the window with something like a toothpick. Then use a fresh blade to cut carefully into the corners of the window frame. For the canopy, I use a flexible plastic tape for the edges, as it follows the curves better than paper and cuts very precisely. But I'll fill in the middle with strips of paper. Now the paint's dried, I'm placing in the gun sight. Look, you'll see I've got some filler on here, but there is very, very little actually needed. I just haven't sanded it down yet. Then the glass can go in. First the windscreen goes into place and sets with some PVA glue. There's this large kind of navigation light here. I'm going to paint the inside of that with clear red to look like a bulb. This then fits onto that support structure in the rear of the cockpit. Then the main canopy itself can go on, again fixed with clear PVA. Leave it all to set, preferably overnight. Come the next day and I'm ready to start the paint job. First on we go with a coat of black gloss primer and this will allow the metal colour paint to really shine out. Now let all of that dry very well, a couple of hours if possible. Because next I'm masking off the areas where I'm adding red paint on the fuselage and the wings. First of all I use a red as a kind of a base coat and I'll finish it with a very light coat of the suggested gloss red so it matches the decals. Speaking of which, I can add all the decals now. With that done, the undercarriage is next. The main leg has a small door that's located in a notch at the top, but make sure there's still a square hole left as this locates the leg in the wing. The main gear doors are two pieces glued together that then slot into a channel in the middle of the gear bay. The main well can then sit into the bay, that small hole I was speaking about locating on a small peg, and the gear door itself sitting in a slot. While that's drying, there are two tiny actuator arms for the main gear doors. The nose gear leg sits into a D-shaped slot, so it makes sure it goes in the right way round. Next is this lamp housing. For retracted undercarriage, this would be a clear part you mask off that gives the impression of stowed landing lights. Then the folded front doors for the nose gear bay hook into the edge of the lamp housing. A small brace leg fits into the nose gear bay next, attaching to the nose leg. The main door of the nose gear sits on the port side like this. Now with all that set, I can add the wheels. All of them have shaped slots so that the flat spot of the weighting sits correctly at the bottom. Next, the fuel tanks go on. I've made these from two halves each and they have small tail fins as well. And each of them has a small stabilizing arm that attaches onto the side of the tank and the wing. The air brakes slot very easily into place. There's a ram that sits inside the fuselage and that connects to the inside of the brake itself and sets the angle correctly. Now I'm going to add to the open door of the ammunition bay on the port side. You can see that cut out of the wing route now. Then I'll add the deployed slats to the leading edge of the wings. I've pre-painted them. Note the red seems offset when they're open but it is actually in the right place. There's a small vent pipe to add at the tail and then I can take off the canopy masks. We're almost there. Some bits of final paint like the black nose of the ranging radar. Also I'll add some wash to the panel lines. I'll wet them with water first then apply the wash with a fine long haired brush and I'm using a black wash here. Finally, I paint the back of the landing lights with aluminium to make them look like reflectors, then fit them just in front of the nose gear doors. And that is my sabre finished. It's undeniably a lovely kit to build. There are lots of options, including the engine covers I added at the last minute. There's an awful lot of detail that you might choose not to fit, but you can decide that for yourself. Likewise, there are an awful lot of stencils. 
you may take a position of how many of those you really want to spend your time fitting on. But the general fit and finish of the kit is very, very good. I had no real issues along the way. And I think the end result is extremely pleasing. There we go, the F86F40 version of the Sabre classic aircraft could be a classic kit. If you've enjoyed the video, please do remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. The way to do that is to click on that tiny little logo down there in the bottom right corner. It doesn't cost you anything, but it helps me. In any case, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.